Welcome, Kailumi. Thank you very much, Dr. Joseph. Nice. So um, I'm happy to have you here uh, to share your experience. Um, I, you know, I didn't even have the experience you have, so that's why I'm I'm bringing you here to to teach us how you did it. So uh, let's let's go back to the beginning a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So you started your journey in Nigeria, right? So talk, yeah. talk to us about where. Uh, okay. Studied in Nigeria. So, okay, I studied in Lagos State University, popularly known as Lasu, mm -hmm. and I um I studied biochemistry. Okay, I graduated in um, February two thousand and twenty. Oh. Yes, so it's yeah mm -hmm. the second class. It's a second class upper degree. Good. Yeah. So that's that's a good thing to mention because most people would think you need a first class, right? Yeah. Uh, 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 so go, go on. So if you need yeah, that is with the four with the four point two four, mm -hmm. yeah. And since then, the pandemic came in. Right. I was waiting for like I was waiting for NYC. Then the pandemic came in. Right. So during that period, my aim was just to like come to the United States for a master's program. Mm -hmm. But funding was the issue because most times we just see like. Um, partially funded and stuff like that. Right. So a friend of mine, he was on LinkedIn, and he, he gets to see a lot of like Nigerians, BSc for maybe EXU and straight up PhD, no MSc degree. So he was so fascinated, and he did find this, and he discovered that oh, we could apply for a straight PhD, PhD. program. So yeah, so I give it to him for that. So. After he told me, I was a little, I was a little bit like, no, oh, this is not true. It's not possible. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that once you get a master's degree, when we do this. So after a lot of research, I sent mails to different schools to confirm, so I don't just end up putting my egg in a basket. And right. So and I later discovered that oh yes, it could work, and then I started preparing for this journey. Good. So that's important to mention that. You know, you sent emails to departments to confirm if you know it's possible yes. to go from master's straight to PhD. Okay. Um, so if you are looking to do that, you want to confirm if they they would you know take international students you know, from yeah. bachelor's to PhD. Some departments won't. Some programs will not do that. Uh, they would prefer people with a master's. So that's one of the lessons that people should not. Now, um, so when you look at when you look at um, everything you did, you know, during the application mm -hmm. process, what was on your CV, uh, you know, maybe you can speak to the basic requirements too. But you know, apart from the basic requirements of exams and all that, what do you think were the special things you did that made mm -hmm. you qualified for a straight PhD? You know, apart from your your degree. Okay. Um. But I would say I was able to sell myself out in a, in a way that a master's student will sell himself out too. Because um, most people undermine the little, little things they do. Mm. I've, I've not had the, like, the opportunity to teach like a loud crowd, like right. maybe 30 people, 20. You no, know, I only just do like little teaching among my friends, even my roommates. So maybe just like four people around my table and I'm just what I've read, I'm trying to explain to them so they can find it. So stuff like that, I tagged it as tutorials because I did it. So I was able to sell myself out with the little, little things I did. And um, during my project, during my undergraduate project, I worked with master's student then in my school. So I had completed my project during like the first semester of my final year. So my second semester, I had the opportunity to like collaborate with my friends, like when they are working on their own project, then I was done with mine. So I could just be in the lab with them, stay there. So things like that, I added it to my CV, even if I was not like a major, a major worker there, like this, but I'm not under them, I'm not under the supervisor. Right. I was just in the lab then. Then I was just doing it for the passion. Like, let me just say, I, I never knew I was going to lead it. Mm -hmm. So I feel that also stood out for me. And um, so before you continue, so you you 
explain that what you are saying is you you were able to explain what you gained during those period yes your, maybe your cv or your statement of purpose right the specific yeah. skills that you yeah. did lab okay i was able to add it to my cv and explain the like the implications and the results gotten from those studies yes yeah, so that that helped mm -hmm. and um my recommendation letters i would say most people love to use like the big names in the department the professors All right. but most times i feel the big names might not give the best recommendation true sure. so i was able to like meet with lecturers that we had like a relationship not necessarily like the big board the lecturers that were they're not the biggest but they could write good stuff because um recently i was speaking with my supervisor and she will because i'm trying to apply to other school she's moving so i'm kind of moving with her. i need to apply so and she was like um she will need people that recommended me for my current program to recommend me again because okay. The, because they wrote very good letters. Oh, so yeah. okay. I could say the recommendation, maybe during the admission committee review, the recommendation really for her to say, oh, she wants these same people, that means they wrote good stuff about me. So we might undermine recommendation, but I feel like um, you should meet with people that know a lot about you and mm -hmm. people that can write, not the essentially busy ones. <laughs> if right. I right. say. So yeah. let, let, let me let me let me re-explain that just in case our people don't understand so what he's saying is he is moving his, his advisor is moving to another school his current advisor is moving from oklahoma state university to another school so and um because you are moving with her you have to kind of like reapply you know yeah. so that you just be in the system yeah and because they have to they need to have that you know that uh, evidence that you applied into the graduate yeah. college, right so it's it's not as if you won't get admitted or something <laughs> but they need to see that now your advisor now asked you to make sure that you know it's those people who recommend. recommended you because i yeah. think the recommendation was stellar yeah. yeah so so that that speaks to the to the importance of um, having very very good recommendation mm -hmm. i think that's that so, the second person that has mentioned that since i started doing this in so, yeah. so uh, are there other yeah. things that we should consider so another thing i want to say is um when looking into schools you should try to reach out to alumni or current graduate students yeah. so i think that really helped me because um basically if um when i was my research what i'm passionate about is just using food supplements in managing various metabolic diseases i was not just stick with bone like when i was just coming in when i was in nigeria trying to apply mm -hmm. i was in diabetes cardiovascular disease and the likes right so i was trying to shoot my shots to lecturers using food condiments in this treatment of various diseases not just bone issues alone right so I noticed that when I sent my first letter to a lecturer in Oklahoma State University, I didn't add the name of an alumni year that graduated from Oklahoma State University and did really well, which is you. So, <laughs> so I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't put the name. So I didn't get a reply. I sent a follow up, no reply. So when I wanted to send it to another lecturer, which is my current supervisor now, I and I was just like, let me just add this to my last opening sentence. I just added the whole, I also met with Dr. Ojo and this and that. So, boom, I got the reply and she was like, yeah, Dr. Ojo is our student, did very well. So, I felt that really helped me too because thinking about what the person has done, she feels that, okay, for, for them to have a connection, that means, oh, he must be good too. And that has also been helping me, like, even last months we had like series of um, um experiments in the lab and we had to carry some of our samples to other labs right. and getting there they were like oh this is Peluni. he came highly recommended from babaji deojo so stuff like that will help you if you can add names of alumni try to reach out to people mm -hmm. me going to indiana now i didn't reach out to like two students already even if i don't need them but i didn't reach out to them 
so they can help me settle in well. So I feel that's a big part of my application. Right. That that's that's very important. Uh, uh, you know, I I say this sometimes on social media that you know. <sighs> The, the best mentorship you you will get is not the one that you you get online but from people who are locally you if you have that local experience in mm. your school you know there are of course we have statement of purpose samples and everything but if you can get someone in that school or that program to actually tell mm. you what people in this program are looking for in a student mm -hmm. that will greatly help you to you know uh, improve on your writing and everything you you need to market yourself to the professors so I, I hope people watching now would um, would try to make that connection with someone there uh, in, in, in the university they are looking at all right so now that um do you have any other tips uh, i don't want to cut you short on mm -hmm. that. i'll just give people to this is general but i think it will mm -hmm. help them okay Passion, passion for your research. All right. In as much as they are coming from Nigeria, you don't like. I'm, I'm saying only Nigeria. I'm sorry. Like in as much as they are coming from various parts of the world, you might not really know much. But I feel you should be passionate about what you want to do, so that when you are explaining to the lecturer, to the professors, they can sense that okay, this person I knows what he's saying. I will not just speak like something I don't really know. Because I've seen interviews and people told me that, oh, they just tried this and they are called up for interview, but they don't really know what and what to do. You don't, you don't, you don't do that. You want to be not really good, but be passionate about it. Let them see that, oh, even when my first interview with my supervisor, she was like, what have I done? I wanted to start speaking and she was like, don't worry, just like I should not speak again because she can see I'm passionate and even if I'm not done much, she feels even when I'm down in the lab, my passion for the work will keep me going. Keep you going, right? Yeah. So passion, one thing. And another thing is <laughs> most schools are, are like putting down GRE now, I'm saying it's optional. But I feel the the role of GRE is is is, is quite is quite large in getting an admission. I'll give you an example. A friend of mine applied to a lot of top schools um, during this last application, mm -hmm. but like most of the school turned him down. He didn't. He wrote the GRE, but he didn't have a good score, like to what they wanted. But he got an admission from like a middle grade school. So before he left the country, like to come and resume here in the United States, that was last fall. Mm -hmm. He studied again for the GRE. He wrote the exam because he was not really okay with that school. So. <laughs> And he got like a 330. Then oh. on getting to the United States, even without stating his current research, he used the same application he used for those same schools, but with a better GRE. And as of yesterday, he's gotten like 30 invites already for interview. Right. Yeah. I think that's also just try to sell yourself. And again, when you are trying to put out your GPA, this is almost in everywhere, but let them know the percentage in which you are. Like I had the 4.24 over 5. That can be, the way they see that, they can be like, oh, this is quite far from 5.0. Mm -hmm. But I added like, okay, I'm top 3%. And they were like, oh, that means the course was really tough. Yeah. So it's in the top 3%. So that's that quite awesome. good. So I think that would that help to um, just sell yourself for the best possible way. Amazing. So uh, those are very good tips. Uh, but again, don't forget that you need to initially ask them, ask the department, yeah. we mentioned that, ask the department if it's possible for an international student, especially, to come straight uh, for a PhD. And um, you ended up with two offer letters, right? I think you got yeah. two or more offers, I can't remember. Yeah, I, I got one from City University of New York, that's in biochemistry. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, and I, I got one from nutrition, but that's they, they offered me master's instead. Yeah, with partial from the University of Kentucky. Okay, yeah. so you got three offers in total. Yeah. How many did you yeah. apply to? Applied to about six. Okay. Yeah, 
I got two rejections and one I didn't get any, I didn't get reply. Any reply. And I, yeah, and I paid seventy five dollars application. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I always well, tell people I, I, I always ask people this because they should expect that there will there will be rejections and uh, maybe in some cases you might not even hear anything yeah. from them, which is terrible. Yeah. Um, but in the end you ended up with three offers, two yeah. straight PhD offers, right? Yeah, one, one MSc. Yeah.